And Steve's going to say, oh, I'm measuring your pulse. Well, how come my hand's on my chest? Well, because your, your hand has to be about the same level as your heart. A little white light, it almost doesn't matter. But the fact of the matter is, my first 15 seconds that I'm going to be measuring, I'm actually going to be measuring her breathing. So the first 15 seconds before the patient becomes uncomfortable is given to the breathing. And let's say my first 15 seconds went up and I got four, I counted four for breathing in 15 seconds. And after that, my other ones, I'm actually counting the pulse at the same time. This way, I'm actually looking at my arm, not at her chest, even though I'm looking at both, but the field of vision goes and the breasts are third in line. So that way I'm not pissing anybody off. Does that make sense? Thank you very much. Have a seat. So in my, my pulse, I counted 17. All right? So what is my rate per minute? Remember, I used it in 15 seconds. So how many, how many respirations per minute did I get if I counted four in 15 seconds? 16. 16. 16. That's right. And how about the other one? 17 I counted for pulse. You're doing very 68. complicated math. Okay. So, huh? Four times. Yeah, okay. So yeah. what did you calculate? Four times ten. Yes, yeah, what, 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 what oh, okay. Sixty-eight. Uh, okay. 50, 50, no, no, you, uh, you said sixty-eight. Yeah. Okay. Sixty-eight is correct. How do we count? Don't do the math. It's very easy. Alright? Watch this. Fifteen is always sixty. Twenty is always eighty. Right? 25 is always 100. And then there's stuff that's in between. So 17 falls somewhere over here, right? So 17 is 60 plus 2 times 4, right? So that would be 68. If I count to 21, 21 is 80 plus 4, so that's 84. Do we need to make any multiplications? No. It's all already there. You see that? All you got to do is just break it down. 15, 20, 25, 15 is always 60, 20 is always 80, 25 is always 100, and then there's anything in between or a little bit beyond. So if you're not so good with the multiplication table, skip it. <laughs> just do it this way. So does this make sense? Yes. So what don't we tell the patient when we're measuring their breathing? We don't tell them that we're measuring their breathing. Exactly. By the way, that's on the final two. Pulse, the people can't fake. Respirations, they fake. So, one last thing that we need to discuss about uh, our vital signs wouldn't be the pain, it would be blood pressure. Because blood pressure, I told you, is not a vital sign. So, blood pressure, what is blood pressure then? Hmm, I wonder, what is blood pressure? Pain. We're not going to measure pain. We don't care about that. But blood pressure is something that we need to give to the doctor. But by the way, if the doctor says, go get, me, uh, go get me vital signs, please take temperature, pulse, and respirations, and blood pressure. Don't be a smart ass and teach the doctor, well, technically Steve taught me that blood pressure is not a vital sign. You told me to measure vital signs. You didn't tell me anything about blood pressure. Don't be a smart ass. All right? The doctor's in charge. He's the boss. Or she. The boss is always right. That's right. No, the customer. But no, in this in particular this case, case yeah. you know, don't educate the doctor. I mean, unless it's something illegal, immoral, and unethical, leave them be. And never correct them in front of the patient or any other staff member. Okay? So, what is blood pressure? I'll tell you. Blood pressure is an easy thing. In reality, blood pressure is the further analysis of your pulse. It's not anything else. Remember I told you, pulse can be hard, pulse can be regular, or pulse could be soft. Well, how soft is it, or how hard is it, or how regular is it? You see, that's what the blood pressure tells us. That's what blood pressure measures. It provides us with a precise measurement of the quality or the hardness or the softness of the contraction of the heart or the pressure inside the arteries. So that's what blood pressure is. It is a further measurement of quality of the pulse. Okay? So 
Uh, let me first tell you the instrument that we use. Look at that word. You find that word on every blood pressure cuff that's out there. On the dial, it says sphygma manometer. Can anyone say sphygma manometer? Yeah, sphygma manometer. Very nice. You, many people have much trouble with this word, but we have to define what this word is. There's a reason why I put it on the board. If you're having a hard time saying any medical terms like endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography, <laughs> there are big words out there, okay? But all that means is that they're made up of a bunch of small words, like this one, sphygmo mano meter. So we know meter already. Mano is hand. Well, spelled differently, or it could be, uh, yeah. So, huh? Yeah. Mano also means pressure or strength. So, mano means strength, and sphygma means pulse. Now, tell me, what is the meaning of the word sphygma manometer? Thank you. So, what is the Definition of blood pressure? Measure strength of the pulse. Strength of the pulse. So when we measure blood pressure, we measure strength of the pulse. Does that not make sense? See how easy it is? I could just stand there and wax eloquently, try to explain to you what it is. But in reality, all I have to do is define the meaning of the word sphygma manometer. And once we have laid down the definition, we already know it's a pulse strength measure or measurement of the strength of the pulse. Either way, left to right or right to left, it works. You see what I mean? Do I need to explain to you what blood pressure actually is? No, but I, I need to explain a little bit more the parts of the blood pressure. Blood pressure is made up of several things. We get two numbers when we take somebody's blood pressure. Top and bottom. Bottom. The top is also called systolic. That's right, diastolic. What does that mean? Systolic means heart at work, and diastolic means heart at rest. What does that mean? You know, this was a classic explanation, and I, I heard that when I was in school many years ago, and I didn't understand what the hell does that mean? Well, it means Pressure during contraction and pressure during relaxation. relaxation. Not just pressure, but arterial pressure during cardiac contraction and arterial pressure during, during relaxation. relaxation. So, there's always blood pressure, not just when the heart squeezes, but also when it relaxes. You know, I, I like to uh, explain it this way. Has anyone ever worked in Dunkin' Donuts? Mm -hmm. Oh, you have? Very nice. A ever been in Dunkin' Donuts? Mm -hmm. The rest of you that didn't work yes. over there? Anyone mm -hmm. ever work in any of the fast food places? There's busy times and there's slow times, right? Yeah. Is it always busy? No. no. If it's always busy, people will commit suicide that work over there. <laughs> so, in the morning... Between 5.30 and 9 a.m. when people are rushing to work, it's busy. Then all of a sudden, like magic, after 9.30, it's dead. But not completely. A couple of late sleepers. So between 5.30 and 9 o'clock, 9.30, people that go to work go to Dunkin' Donuts. After 9.30, people that stay home and collect welfare, the, the, <laughs> something like that. Late sleepers. Um, then they trickle in, right? Then all of a sudden, between 11.30 and 1 p.m., it gets busy again. What happened? Lunchtime. Lunchtime. People need their sugar and caffeine fix. Then, after 1 p.m., gone. But at 3.30, it starts up again. Kind Why? Of from the Afternoon drive. <laughs> going home. People that went to work at 5.30, going back at 3.30. So from 3.30 to 7.00, Ba, boom. Ba, boom. Heartbeat. Squeeze, relax. Squeeze, relax. High pressure, low pressure. High pressure, low pressure. 